Hello, my name is Brian C. and this is my partner Amir Khan. And today we're here to um, argue our point that uh, physician-assisted suicide should be made legal for all terminally ill patients in the United States. First of all, I would like to um, tell you the definition of what physician-assisted suicide is. It's a voluntary termination of one's own life by the administration of a lethal, lethal substance with direct or indirect assistance of physicians. Physician-assisted suicide is a practice of proving a competent patient with a prescription for medication for the patient to use with the primary intention of ending his or her own life. Um, after that, I'd like to read you a quote. Uh, um, it's four, four out of five Americans now die in an institution, hospital, nursing home, or other extended health. Health extended care facility in which typically parents patients forfeit control over what to wear, when to eat, and what to take when to take medications, for example. Furthermore, they are also inevitably losing a substantial privacy. Intimate body parts are examined, highly personal facts are written down, and someone they have never seen before may occupy the bed next to them. Um, so that pr that that leads into my next uh, my three main points. A Patients with, terminally, with painful terminal illnesses suffer until their slow death. B, patients deserve the right to die. And C, poor health care uh, system has left many citizens without sufficient health care. Um, with point A, uh, life-ending medications give patients a pain-free death. Many patients die of uh, in usually excruciating death because of the fact of the various diseases that they have um, obtained throughout their life. Uh, underlying, when it comes to um, patients in Oregon, which is where the only U.S. Uh, U.S. state that allows patients to suicide, 81.1% have cancer. Another 7.6% have uh, multiple sclerosis, and 3.9% have respiratory disease. So that means that a lot of them are suffering a basically a terminal disease that will in the, in the end kill them. Um, also, but if you think about it, a human has a life, yes. But there comes a point where human life is only worth so much. For example, we put down animals. We, we put them to sleep. Now, I'm not going to compare human life to an animal life. That's absurd. But I'm saying that at a certain point, it is right to put an animal to sleep just because of the fact that they suffer. They suffer so much that, it's not, that their life is not what it was before they got hurt. Um, a statement by the American Veterinary Men Medical Institute says, if your pa pet is terminally ill or critically injured, or if the financial and emotional cost of treatment is beyond your means, euthanasia may be a valid option. Now that backs up my point, saying that animals are put down because of the fact that they're in so much pain. Um, so next, my next point, point B, is that patients have the right to die. Um, Stu Rodriguez, a high-profile terminally ill resident of Canada, once said, whose life is anyway? Meaning that a person should have control of their own, over their own life. Whether it does, It's not an issue of someone going to kill them. It's whether they want themselves to end their own life. Um, Faye Gersh, who is an executive of the Hemlock Society, said, at the Hemlock Society, we get daily calls from desperate people who are looking for someone like Jack Kevorkian to end their life, with how, which have lost all quality. Americans should enjoy a right guaranteed in the European Declaration of Human Rights, the right not to be forced to suffer. It should be included as much of a crime to make someone live who is just justification does not wish to continue it as a life without consent. Therefore, if someone wants to end their life, you should let them. Just how suicide is legal in the United States. It's not a crime to try and commit suicide. Now, saying that, life is the most precious gift of all. Um, and so, uh, jo Joanne Lynn wrote in her book, Handbook for Mortals, that life is the most precious gift of all, and no sane, no sane person wants to part with it. But there are some circumstances where life, where life has lost its value. A competent person who has thoughtfully considered his or her, her own situation and finds that unrevealed suffering outweighs the value of continued life. And therefore, if patients should, in fact, <coughs> control their own lives, then their doctors should support that. Um, doctors should serve as their patient's servant. Therefore, the doctors should carry out their own wishes. Um, in a statement by the a uh, American Civil Liberties Union, uh, the right of competent terminally ill person to avoid excruciating pain and brace terminally, a timely, sorry, 
and dignified death bears the sanction of history and is implicit in the concept of orderly liberty. Also, um, though he, in fact he is a criminal, Jack Kevorkian, who um, did physician assisted suicides in Michigan, said the following um, on Larry King Live. Um, see, everyone's got it backwards. It's to relieve them of their intolerable and unending suffering. The patient's wish, see, that's not my wish. That's what Hippocrates said. He says, you are the servant of the patient, the servant. But doctors today consider, consider themselves, you know, the overlord of the patient. They've got that twisted backwards. So I've got to do what the patient requires. So I always felt that their wishes came first, no matter what. And that leads into my last um, point, which is poor health care leads to citizens without sufficient health care. There's another quote from Joanne Lynn in her book. Sadly, our, health, our current health care system and its practices leave people suffering and unreasonably unnecessary at the end of their life. Too often, people suffer from unavoidable pain and other symptoms in their final days. And such suffering can occur even with good care. People advocate for much more reliable physician assisted suicide to guard against these possibilities. And that means that people are left to suffer because of the fact that they, in most cases, can't pay for um, health, their, their health care system, the way it tries to cheat them and puts them to the most, in the cheapest, uh, cheapest hotels, or not cheapest, uh, hospices and end of care life. Sometimes if they value their life to the point where it's not worth much, they can uh, pursue a physician. <coughs> and so I'd like to end this argument by saying, I believe that removing the uh, prohibition against physician assistance, um, rather than opening the floodgates to ill-advised suicide, is likely to reduce the incentive for suicide. Patients who fear great suffering in the final stages of illness would have the assurance that help would be available if needed, and they would become more inclined to test their own abilities to withstand the trials that lie ahead. Thank you.